Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about arithmetic and geometric averages. It's usually covered at the beginning of intermediary financial courses, and it's something that a lot of students struggle with. So if I, we can start off with an example. If I were to ask you to provide uh, the average of these four numbers, what most of us would do is we'd sum up those numbers and then divide it by the number of numbers, which in this case the sum would be 20, and there are four numbers, so the average would be 5. The process and usually what most of us think of when we think of averages is the arithmetic average, which is summing up those returns or the, the uh, data values in each period, then dividing by the number of data values to get your average data value. And so when looking at uh, the return of a stock, the arithmetic average return would simply be the return in year one, two, all the way till the number of years that you're considering, dividing by the number of periods to get your average return value. And so that's what we usually think of when we think of averages. So what about geometric average? The difference is that the geometric average return is the average compound return earned per year over a multi-year period. So instead of simply adding up the, the return values and then dividing by the number of returns, we are adding one to each of the return values in each period, multiplying each of those products, to then raise that to the power of 1 over n, the number of periods, and then subtracting by 1. So what's the difference? Because really a lot of people struggle to understand the differences between arithmetic and, and geometric average returns. Well, the difference is when you're considering uh, the returns of stocks, those return values are actually dependent upon each other. When we're taking a look at random data sets and data values, those data values are uncorrelated and independent of each other. So the arithmetic average return usually is used. And so that's why you've be become so familiar with that average. But the geometric average is used used in financial courses because, again, for investment values, your portfolio is dependent upon the last year's return as well. So because of that dependence upon it, uh, the previous year's returns, you're looking at the average return per year. So it's that compounding effect that is impacted by the geometric average return. So let's take a look at an example. So Security A, over a five-year time horizon, has performed uh, increased by 10% in year one, dropped by 8%, then dropped by 4%, 40 afterwards, and then up by 12. And so if we were to calculate the arithmetic average, we'd simply add up those values to get a sum of 50%, then divide by the number of periods, which in this case is five years, to get an arithmetic average of 10%. So that's relatively simple. The geometric average, on the other hand, requires you to add those one, uh, that one value to each of the returns. And so I've changed the percentage values to decimal values to better illustrate that. So our first step would be to add one to each of these returns. So our first year is the, the stock was up by 10%. So now it'd be 1.1. Then the next year dropped by 8%. So now it's 0 0.92 because we add that one. And so I did that for each of the years. After you have added that one value, you multiply each of these values by each other to get a sum of 1.52. So I multiply 1.1 times 0 0.92 times 0 0.96 times 1.4 times 1.12 to get a net value of 1.52. After doing this, we simply raise it to the power of 1 over n, which in this case, it's a five-year uh, period, we, we raise it to the power of 1 over 5 to get a net value of 1.087826. Now to find the percentage, we simply take away 1 to get 0.087826 in decimal format or in percentage format, it would be 8.78%. So that's how you calculate the geometric average. So what's the overview? The overview in the arithmetic average, you're looking at the returns in an average year. So the arithmetic average would smooth out the net returns added together while the geometric average looks at the average return per year. So it looks at that compounding effect because these returns are dependent upon each other. In the example, the arithmetic average was 10%, whereas the geometric average was 8.78%. And as you can see, the geometric average is less than the arithmetic average. And that is a common rule. The geometric average will always be smaller or equal to the arithmetic average. And the difference between the two will increase with volatility. So the example that we took a look at, there were negative uh, returns in years two and three. 
and also positive returns in the remaining years. And so there was volatility in that. And that's why there's this big difference between the two. Now, if we took a look at an example where the returns were positive and incrementally increased over the five year period, this difference would be significantly less because the volatility would be less. So as the volatility and returns increases, the difference between these two increases. And so that's why when you're considering which average to look at, it's very important to understand which one to use. So which one do we use? Well, the geometric average is better used in the long run because it reflects the volatility of the investment and accounts for the compound return. The arithmetic average usually smooths that performance and it inaccurately measures the longer term averages. And so quick mind trick to kind of remember which one's which. Well, geometric, I think of geo as global, something big, long, and I think long run, right? So geometric average is better in the long run. And so then we can conclude that in the short run, the arithmetic average is better. However, there is a formula, the Bloom's formula can combine these two uh, averages to find common ground. So if the arithmetic average is overly optimistic for long term horizons, and the geometric average is overly pessimistic for short term horizons, then the Bloom's formula combines these two to f uh, find uh, an average return for t, the forecast horizon. So say, for example, in the previous, uh, in the previous example, we had n, uh, our n would be five periods. And then for t, if we took t to be three, so we uh, forecast for a three year horizon, we'd put three over here, five over here, then five over here, five over here, and then three over here, we'd sub in the necessary values to find the blooms average return for a three year forecast horizon. So let's take a look at an example using the blooms formula. So if we were to consider the large cap stock performance between 1926 and 2009, the geometric average would be 9.7%, while the arithmetic average would be 11.7%. And n would be 84 because that is that 84 year period. So if we were to calculate for t 1, 5, 10, 25, and 84, and we plug in those necessary values, the result would be for forecast horizon of 1, we'd get a, a Bloom's average of 11.7%. For a forecast horizon of 10, we'd get 11.5% as a Bloom's average. But if you look very closely, you'll actually see that the smaller the forecast horizon, the closer the Bloom's average is to the arithmetic average, whereas as the forecast horizon becomes longer, the closer the Bloom's average is to the geometric average, which confirms our assumptions that the arithmetic average is better used in the short term, while the geometric average is better used in the long term. So for a bonus question, which you can work on by yourself, instead of just being given the return values, you're going to consider a stock with at base year starts at $23.25. Uh, and over the five year period, the stock changes yearly. And accounting for that dividend as well, you will calculate the individual returns. And then you will need to find the arithmetic, geometric, and the Bloom's average for a forecast period of three comment below to share your answers. If you have any other questions, please do reach out and hopefully you can like and subscribe my channel for more videos. Thank you.